All right. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever in the world you are joining us today. Welcome to the monthly NetApp on NetApp uh, partner webinar. Uh, joining me today are Matt Norton and Scott Sanford. Who are going to discuss all things uh, spot. And with that, I will turn it over to them. All right. Let me share my screen here. Can everybody see that? We got you. All right, so today we're going to talk about uh, NetApp IT's usage of uh, Spot by NetApp products. My name is Matt Norton. Um, I've been with NetApp for about 15 years, um, working exclusively in corporate IT. Um, I've worn a lot of infrastructure hats. Um, I focus the past four or five years has been on public cloud. Um, so we maintain an internal portal, hybrid cloud portal, where users can come in to a ServiceNow service catalog page and request things like VMs, load balancers, storage, et, et cetera. Um, at, as part of that, uh, we use Spot by NetApp on the back end uh, to run things as uh, efficiently and cheaply as possible. Uh, Scott, do you want to do a quick intro also? Yeah, so uh, yeah, I've been with NetApp for just over 11 years now. Look, kind of like Matt, worn different hats. I've been in you know, the engineering side, uh, engineering and IT, data centers, and the you know, last few years I've been on in the IT team. You know, I've worked with uh, AWS for I don't know, six, seven years now, uh, and Spot for about five or six. All right, thanks, Scott. So uh, there are many products in the, the Spot ecosystem. Uh, today, we'll focus on three of them, uh, namely Eco, Elastic Group, and Ocean. So uh, we'll go through those and kind of talk about what they are, um, how they work, and uh, NetApp IT's usage of those products. So um, this is just a, a generic slide. Uh, there are um, other Spot products, Spot by NetApp products, uh, Spot Storage, um, and, and a few others. Um, but but again, today we're just focusing on three. So uh, first up is Eco. So so what is Eco? In a nutshell, it's it's autopilot for your reserved instance plans, um, in Amazon or or Azure. So when I say reserved instance plans, I'm talking about RIs and savings plans, uh, which are, are newer uh, in the past two or three years. So ECO is a way to offload the management of your plans, the, the purchasing, um, the selling, uh, et cetera, uh, from your team to, to Spot by NetApp. So to clarify, uh, because the, the naming can be a little confusing with, with the term spot in the name, uh, but ECO addresses your on-demand compute, not, not your spot type compute, but your on-demand compute. So when you buy uh, an RI plan or, or savings plan, what you're trying to do is get a discount on your on-demand compute. So the goal generally uh, for for eco and, and for yourself in general is to push your on-demand coverage as close to 100 percent as possible without over committing right so if you buy a plan whatever that plan is you definitely want to use it you don't want to leave anything on the table and you want to cover as many on-demand instances as possible so that you're getting a discount otherwise uh, you're paying full price which you, you don't want to do and, and one last advantage of ECO is that it helps to maintain the liquidity of your plans, of, of your commitment. So in the event that your usage of EC2 or, or Azure virtual machines was going to go down, ECO can help you in sort of offloading any commitments you may have um, so that you, you don't lose your money. So this is a look at uh, Amazon RI and savings plans, um, sort of the, the attributes of each. 
it's it's a lot, right? So I'm not going to go through this, but that's kind of the point, right? I mean, there's a lot of um, properties for each, uh, some which will be good for you, some which may not be as good for you. Uh, it, it's a lot, right? So so sort of picking the appropriate plan can depend on a lot of things, uh, depending on your situation. So um, also of note, though, Eco can also help with uh, Amazon RDS uh, RIs. Um, those are not in the table here, but if you have investments in RDS, uh, which which many do, then Eco can also help manage those plans. So I mentioned that here at the bottom. So this is a look at a, a blend of plans that might be typical for uh, an eco managed Amazon account or organization. So um, you can see that eco will heavily use standard RIs. And the reason that standard RIs uh, are, are, are favored in, in a lot of ways is because they can be sold on the Amazon marketplace. So if you're not familiar with the Amazon marketplace, um, it's a service uh, that, that Amazon hosts that allows customers to unload any commitments or plans against standard RI plans that they don't need. So you can sell to, to other customers, other Amazon customers. So Eco will utilize this marketplace to help with that liquidity I mentioned, and also to find uh, what they call marketplace gold, right? Which is a, a, a significantly discounted plan that another customer is looking to offload that you can purchase for for a big discount. So uh, that that's why this the sixty five percent here um, is 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 marked as sellable. So sellable is generally good again to to avoid those those overcommitments. Uh, but you know again depending on your situation, you typically want to see a blend of other types of plans, right? Like convertible RIs and savings plans which are uh, the most flexible um, at the expense of not getting the, the highest discount. So uh, the point is, is that for most people, a, a blend of different types of, of plans and, and durations, right? So one or three years is usually best to, to save uh, the, most, the most money. So this this slide shows on the left uh, what what might be a typical blend for an a uh, a customer who is managed by Eco, right? So uh, sort of like the previous slide, and uh, the middle and the right are things that a customer might do. And this this slide is uh, it sort of hits home, but because before um, we we got our, our plans managed by Eco. This is exactly what we were doing. So uh, similar to, to one or, or two here. Um, when the when Amazon first introduced the savings plan, we were like, well, this is great, right? Because it, it can apply to any instance type. It's very easy. You don't have to worry about um, specific RIs anymore. Um, so we sort of ditched all the RIs, right? And, and went all into savings plans. Uh, but the downside again is that with the savings plans, you're you're not going to maximize your savings. It's it's easier, yes, uh, but you won't maximize the savings. So uh, we had done this this very thing, right? We, let's just go all into savings plans. That way, we don't have to spend time on it. There's not much time. Uh, it's very easy to do. Uh, but uh, the spot team estimates that when your plans are managed by Eco, that they can save an additional forty percent uh, of your savings versus what the typical customer would do on their own. So some uh, actual uh, data from from NetApp IT's change from sort of engineer managed RI plans to eco managed. Uh, we were able to push the coverage above 95%. So this means again that for 95% of our, our on-demand instances that we have running in EC2, that they are getting, they're covered under some, some plan uh, so that we're getting the, the discount. Before we were something, you know, like 80 to 85, um, which is not terrible, I suppose, but, uh, you, you know, it still leaves a lot of money on the table. We were able to push the utilization to 100%. Um, so if you're, you know, if you're spending the money on the plan, you, you certainly want to, to use it. 
Um, we were able to take advantage of the marketplace. Um, so we had never used the marketplace before, right? Because there's some amount of involvement in somebody sitting and looking at all the plans that are available from other, other sellers and, and trying to pick one that's appropriate. We had never done that. Um, so, uh, you know, using eco, they will, they will, they will take advantage of the marketplace, uh, to maximize your savings. The overhead on an engineer was reduced by an estimated 60%. So, um, instead of somebody having to spend a lot of time on, uh, managing financial things and plans instead of, um, you know, day-to-day -day work, um, you know, you're, you're able to offload that work to eco to sort of take care of that for you uh, so that so that engineers can focus on their their day to day work. And uh, last year. It's constant vigilance, right? So this was typically something that we might look at once a month at best, right? You know, let's look, look at our workload and let's see what the coverage is and the utilization and plan for the future. You know, that was like a monthly thing at best. With, with ECO, they are pulling and analyzing your billing data twice a day to uh, to make the right moves for you. And so, so in the end, it's all about saving money, right? So the ECO um, is all about uh, getting you the right blend of plans. Uh, again, it's, it's like autopilot. You're sort of turning over the reins uh, to the ECO team uh, to manage your plans for you. So Mark, uh, do you want to want to pause right there? Yeah, let's just have a, a kind of quick conversation. Um, you know, what is a quote unquote spot and, you know, why should our partners care? Right. So th the word spot, um, it's ambiguous, right? Because uh, the, the company uh, was spot by spot. IO was bought by NetApp and now it's uh, it's named spot by NetApp. But, but what is spot really? Spot really is a lifecycle type for a, a public cloud virtual machine, right? Um, spot VMs, uh, as opposed to on-demand VMs, are carved from excess hyperscaler capacity, right? So um, that excess capacity is the leftover compute power that is not consumed by on demand, right? And so instead of sorting, just just letting that capacity sit idle, Amazon came up with the idea to, to sell that capacity and call it spot, right? So uh, the good part about spot is that you can save a lot of money, right? So in some cases up to, up to 90%. Mm -hmm. The downside of spot is that uh, Amazon and Azure uh, will reclaim those instances when the on-demand uh, demand spikes up, right? So when the on-demand uh, begins to spike, Amazon or Azure will have to reclaim capacity from spot VMs by shutting them down. Very good. Yeah. All right, so the after ECO, uh, we're going to talk about Elastigroup slash uh, Stateful Node. So, we, we mentioned that spot can be taken back at any time. Um, and I'll also mention that, that based on Amazon's own data, and there's a link a little bit later where you can see this, uh, you can look up the instance type, you know, say a T3 medium, whatever, and Amazon will give you the, the typical rate at which those spot VMs will be reclaimed, right? And so most of them, if you look, are sub 5%, which means that in a given month, the likelihood of that VM being reclaimed uh, is less than 5%. So um, uh, it, to be clear, no one knows uh, Amazon's algorithm for reclamations, right? So you know, how and when, right? I mean, do they take VMs that are the noisiest, the, the most demanding? Is it random? No one actually knows. So there's no guarantees with Spot um, that it will be running at, at any given moment or, or not running. Uh, but the allure is is the significant discounts. So Spot Elastic Group or, or Stateful Node lets you take the Spot lifecycle concept, which is sort of inherently stateless, and um, 
utilize that in a stateful way, right? So allowing you to take your VMs, treat them like pets, which in NFIT, most of our VMs are still sort of in that 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 model um, instead of cattle, right? And so it does that by allowing you to take spot VMs and persist things like the IP address. So the IP address will always be the same uh, when it's when your spot VM is terminated and it comes back. The IP address will be the same. It allows you to persist your EBS disks. So uh, by default, if you provision a spot VM and it's reclaimed, those things, the, the EBS disk and the IP address are, are not persisted, right? So you're sort of uh, given a, a new VM, um, so to speak. Again, by utilizing Spot, uh, you can save lots of money. And we'll, we'll look at some of the numbers uh, here in, a, in another slide. And the disadvantages is that at any given time, um, those, those VMs can be reclaimed. And the, the excess capacity that um, Spot is carved from, that will vary by the, the region. Uh, in the availability zone and the instance type, right? So the capacity for a T3 medium is not the same capacity for in, uh, a C5 uh, and so on. So when does it make sense to use something like Spot or uh, Elastigroup? So it, it really comes down to the application workload, right? So what is what is your VM running? So if the if the workload is sort of stateless in nature, um, then it's a slam dunk, right? So Spot it, it, again is sort of inherently uh, meant for for stateless workloads. So if um, you're running a stateless workload, then then it's perfect. If it is stateful though, if if your VMs are are those pets and not cattle, then then it depends. The answer is it depends. So. Um, one question to ask is, do I care if the application is down, right? So, which which might seem like a silly question, uh, but in some cases for, you know, sort of tier three, tier four applications, uh, the answer is no. You know, if it goes down, uh, nobody may notice or, or only an individual or two may notice. Um, so, in those cases, spot uh, it is good. If the application or or certain application components like the web layer, app layer, whatever, if those are redundant or, or, or load balanced or auto scaled, meaning that particular component, web app, whatever, is not dependent on a single VM, then uh, a spot also uh, is, has a good use case for those, right? Because if you're very horizontally scaled, then any one VM going down, it, it doesn't really hurt you, right? Is it subprod or production? So, you know, typically for prod, you want stuff to always be up and running. And if it goes down, then then probably somebody will notice. That's why it's production. For subprod, though, um, that may not be the case, right? So if your subprod is down, uh, that may be perfectly acceptable, again, depending on whether it's a, a tier zero, tier one application. Uh, Kubernetes uh, is usually a good fit. Uh, and Scott will talk about uh, using Spot with Kubernetes uh, via Spot Ocean uh, in a bit. Uh, just because of this sort of abstracted nature of Kubernetes, where it, it runs a little bit higher up the stack, um, you know, Spot can be utilized uh, really well for for Kubernetes. For structured data and databases, it is typically not not a great fit. Um, and you know, it really it kind of depends on on the database technology uh, that you happen to be using, um, and how the clustering uh, or redundancy may work. Um, but even if there's some redundancy, applications typically um, do not are not happy with a database connection that suddenly disappears, even if it's just for uh, you know a second or two. So so we find that databases are are not not often a good fit. So uh, again, in summary. You know, if it's if it's a subprod thing, doesn't need to be running 24 by 7. Um, if it's very horizontally scaled, um, those are are really good candidates for for Elastigroup. So this is just a a look at kind of what your savings might look like. And actually, I think I took these from US East, was which is actually has the lowest savings. Um, other regions, you may see the discount here. 
uh, 80 plus percent, uh, depending. Uh, but you can see, and you can go to this link, FYI, and, and I talked about the, the spot termination rates statistics from Amazon. You can see those here. So you can look up your region and your instance type and see, you know, is it typically less than 5%? Is it less than 10? Uh, is it less than 20? Uh, and so on. You can see that uh, here at the top, we've got generic Linux, right? So this might be something like uh, CentOS or, or Alma Linux. Um, We've got rail in the middle here, and then windows at the bottom. So for licensed operating systems like rail or windows, the savings are less, right? Which which kind of makes sense. For generic Linux, the savings are really, really high. And again, this is where you'll get, not in US East, but other regions, you'll get that 80 plus uh, savings. So it's, you know, it's very significant. It, it, it's, not, it's not small. Um, which is why you know everyone should really really consider spot. So so how does IT NetApp IT use spot? So I, I mentioned earlier that we have an internal hybrid cloud portal which we host in, in ServiceNow Service Catalog, where users can come in and provision VMs and, and other infrastructure things. Um, when somebody comes in and provisions a sub prod virtual machine, a dev tester stage. By default, we automatically put that on Elastic Group, right? Meaning it's running as a spot and not on demand. Um, you know, we have a lot of sub prod, uh, you know, of the total number of VMs, it's probably something like uh, 40 to 50%. So it's a large, large amount of uh, compute and a lot of savings to be had. Now, in some cases, you know, there are cases where uh, an application owner or, or customer will come and say, hey, yeah, I know it's sub prod, but I need it running 24 by seven. Um, so in those cases, we will we will make exceptions and let those run as on demand. But the vast majority, uh, 90% um, that are sub prod, they will run as spot. So we also, in addition to the spot savings, we make use of what we call parking of VMs, which is really just um, turning them off, right? So uh, if you turn off a VM in the public cloud, you get big savings, right? So basically at that point, you're just paying for, for your storage. Uh, On-prem, we, we did not do that. So on-prem, it's different, right? Because you've already made a CapEx investment in your compute, your servers, your network equipment, your storage equipment. So turning off a VM on-prem, you save a negligible amount of money. A little bit of power and cooling, yes, but really uh, not too much. So um, as NetApp IT moves more and more workloads into public cloud, um, you know, in order to save money, we're making use of spot and also uh, parking of VMs on a schedule that that the user can set. I mean, all things equal, you know, we typically find that if you if you compare on-prem to public cloud and you you migrate a workload from on-prem to public cloud and you do things exactly the same way, right? You don't really change anything. You kind of forklift stuff and move it over. Uh, you will pay more in the public cloud, uh, almost definitely. Um, usually to the tune of 20% of or so is what we found. Um, but the, the, the bigger your VM scales, the bigger the VM is, it actually goes much higher than that. And the smaller it is, it can be a little bit less. It's pretty cheap to run uh, very small VMs in, in Amazon. But as a rule of thumb, you know, roughly roughly 20%. So, but by using things like Spot and by using things like parking or powering off the VMs when they're not needed, uh, we can actually save more, a lot more uh, than we can on-prem. So again, if you do things exactly the same way that you do on-prem, you're not gonna save money. You're gonna spend more without a doubt. So I've got I've got some examples, um, of, you know, when considering migration and the impact that that spot and also parking can have uh, that we've we've observed in IT. So if we take the example of an on-prem VM, eight CPU, thirty-two gig uh, of memory that's running twenty-four by seven, then we estimate the cost, uh, our own internal numbers, to be about two forty-one. If you take that same VM, same size. Uh, and you move it to Amazon uh, on spot, then the number drops from 241 to 189 per month. And if you take that 189 per month and you apply parking for uh, um, 12 hours a day, so instead of running 24 hours a day, it's running 12, 
uh, then that of course decreases by 50%. So you've gone from 241 to 29450. So another example, take that same VM running for 241, uh, move it to Amazon. And this time, uh, again, moving it to spot will be 189. If you do the parking um, for uh, on the weekend, right? So you run five days a week, uh, but, but power it down on the weekend, then you can run for 135. So again, you know, if, if you make some changes to the way you run, you can actually run a lot cheaper in uh, public cloud. A couple more examples. So, so again, that same same VM. If we actually break that VM into, and again, this is application dependent. You know, if you can scale horizontally, we, we take two VMs, right, which are are, are four CPU and sixteen gig uh, instead of one. We break that into two. Uh, we can actually save money, believe it or not. So by going from one VM on prem to two spot VMs in the cloud, you can still save significant money. And then one last example here, um, taking that same, oops, uh, same VM, uh, applying the, uh, this is actually, this is all on-demand to on-demand comparison. But if you go on-demand to on-demand, you're not even using spot, but you just take the time to park VMs on the weekend, then uh, the cost is almost the same, right? 241 to 245. So, you know, depending on how you sort of slice and dice things, you know, where you can apply spot, where you can't, where you can apply parking or where you can't, um, you know, the, the savings can be quite large. All right, um, I ran through that quickly. Uh, Mark, do you wanna, wanna pause for questions or, or keep going with, with spot? We'll talk about spot ocean. Yeah, we got one question from the chat. Um, how often does Amazon update and publish the uh, termination rates? I do not know how often they update it, uh, but it's there. Uh, um, that link I mentioned, things are going very slow here. Yeah, at, at the bottom yeah, of, of, it's, of it's the link, that there's some information there about, in that or, link. Um, yeah, and there's yeah. some uh, links yeah, to the sorry, AWS uh, labs where they're a bit. Okay. Yeah, and we'll we'll send out a copy of the deck after the presentation. Okay. Uh, Matt, are we ready to turn it over to Scott? And Matt may have froze. <laughs> so Scott, you are up. If you can take control. I can try. So the in the, the link that Matt had, the there was a, a link to AWS Labs, and there, there might be a project in there that has information about how to how to get the latest interruption rates. I was trying to look at that a little bit while while Matt was talking, and well, there there could be something in there where you can you can pull the data live. I, I think that there is a AV, API call somewhere in EC2 where you can get some of that information. Very good. Okay, so Spot Ocean. Um, so Spot Ocean at, at the, the heart of it, it's an engine that manages your Kubernetes worker nodes. Under the hood, it's using Elastic Groups for a lot of the the EC or a lot of the compute um, management. So the creating and and or provisioning, deprovisioning the, the worker nodes uh, on the back end is really handled through an Elastic Group that you you, you don't have direct access to, but you, you can look at. Yeah, and you have whatever constraints Elastic Group has. You have that with with, with Ocean, which typically there aren't very aren't very many constraints. Yeah, Ocean will right size and bin, bin pack your, your cluster. You can have you can have a mixture of on demand and spot nodes within your cluster. Or you can have have a, a something called a virtual node group, which is just a collection of worker nodes. And the virtual you can have multiple virtual node groups in your cluster, 
and those virtual node groups could be 100% on demand, 100% 100 spot, or some percentage in, bet in between there. Yeah, like Matt was talking earlier, for it doesn't make a lot of sense to have spot instances you know, running databases. It's kind of the same thing for Kubernetes. You, you don't really want to have you know, your worker nodes running database pods uh, on spot instances just because they, they generally don't handle it that well. So you know, it's a case where you create a virtual node group that's just on demand and use a, a label and taint to, to have your, your database uh, pods running on, on those nodes to reduce the, the interruptions. So Ocean also has you know, predictive replacements. I think it's about a 15 minute window. So in the case of AWS, you have a two minute window where a spot instance is gonna be reclaimed. Uh, what, what Ocean's doing is it's using machine learning and predictively replacing instances that it is, it's thinking is gonna be replaced. And since it's, it's Kubernetes, as long as you have an application designed correctly, you don't really notice because your pods are across multiple nodes and you know one one node goes down because it's being replaced the application keeps running and and new node comes up and pod gets gets either uh, deployed onto that new node or excess capacity within the cluster and it, it also does have a, a lot of reporting and i'll show you a little bit of that in a, in a moment here So how impactful has spot been on, on our cost? Generally, we see it, it really it really varies by cluster. Yeah, we, we've seen anywhere up to you know 70s percentage for cost savings over on demand. I'd say by, by large, it's usually around you know in the 60 percent range, 60, 65 uh, over over on demand. I have a, a couple of diagrams that I took from the ocean dashboard to kind of highlight a, a few different aspects of it. So the, they do have multiple tabs across here, so you can do the analysis by namespace. Yeah, uh, it does make right, right sizing recommendations. So you know the, the, where the, the limits and the requested for the pods. You know if the pod's not running at, at what was requested. Yeah, it'll it'll be reported there and make recommendations of how to go through and change your, your pod settings your, to better utilize the or reduce waste within the, the cluster for that pod. So what we have here is you, you can define headroom within the cluster just so that when new pods are deployed or you know, there's a replacement, you're not waiting for a new node to, to come up and get added to the cluster, which is Usually, you know, around five minutes from start to finish for that new node to be in there. So the, the headroom allows you to, to have some flexibility where you're not waiting for that. And what this, this top graph is showing is what's actually being used in the cluster and then how much headroom you have, both for CPU on the left and then memory on the right. What we have at the bottom here is, I think, yeah, so it's a one day view of the nodes within this particular cluster. And you can see how it's scaling up and scaling down. That could be a combination. Well, it could be from spot replacements. It could be from bin packing. It could be changes in the, the cluster. You know, you pods get, you know, deployments get removed, deployments get added, resource settings of the deployments get changed. Uh, you know, if you look back a few years, you know, like in our case, we had on, a, a good on-prem size cl cluster. And we had a lot of automation to go through to do the auto scaling up and down to add VMs in the, the virtual center, to remove them, to you know, try to have that the right size cluster. Ocean's doing that all for, for us. We don't have to do any, any automation to change the number of nodes or the size of the nodes in the cluster. We're merely giving, a, giving it a list of instance types that we want to we want to use, or you can just say, I, I need a minimal of you know, X number of CPUs and a max of X number of CPUs, you know, same for the memory, and it'll just find those instance types that, that, that meet the, that criteria. Uh, on the right here, bottom right here, what you can see, 
this is the workload for the CPU and for the memory. And this is how much it was requested. So the, the space between here is how much is being wasted just from the pods not being right sized. And, and that's just on one of the dashboards within, within Ocean and, and the right sizing tab. You can really start to see where you can make those tweaks to reduce the the waste, get those those lines close together, get get more savings by having having fewer you know, worker nodes in your cluster. So what are the, what are the benefits that we see within IT? So we, I kind of talked about the the auto scaling. We don't have to have to do that. It's built into Ocean. It does it for us. Uh, we can configure the the headroom. You know, both at the cluster and the virtual node group. So, you know, we can make different changes. So like in the case of you have a virtual node group that's running your, your database, you know, pods. Well, maybe that's fairly static and you don't need a lot of headroom. You, you want to have it, you know, close to what you're running. So you could have your headroom for that virtual node group be smaller, but then the majority of your workload in the cluster you can have that be a little, a little bit higher just so that you, you can deal with the flux of, of what's happening with the within the cluster and what the, the application teams are, are doing. It, it also has a, a built-in cluster role. So you don't have to go through and patch your machines. Uh, you can simply go in and change the AMI that you're using within the virtual node groups or at, at the cluster level, click a button, and Ocean will go through and it will it will cordon and drain you know, a certain percentage, user-defined percentage of your cluster while it's spinning up new nodes to replace the ones that just cordon. Yeah, and it'll just walk through your entire cluster and new nodes will come up, pods will shift around, and you're now on a on an updated AMI. So if, if you're doing patching and you know, the AMI is handling all your all your latest patches. You can just update the AMI definition, do a cluster roll, and you know just wait, you know usually about a half an hour or so, and the cluster will be replaced. You don't have to worry about the the, the management plane because we're well, you, you could have it all running on EC2, but in in our case, we're we're in AWS. And the clusters are managed by, or they're EKS clusters. So Amazon's managing the control plane side. So we're, we're just concerned about the worker nodes. You also get a cost analysis of the namespaces. So you can see how much each namespace is, is costing on a daily basis, and then you know aggregate that through in a, in a larger view. Kind of already talked about virtual node groups. Uh, in general, it really depends on the, on the cluster that we're looking at. We see between 57 and 78% savings in our clusters versus, versus on demand, which is quite a bit. You know, you don't run into the same problem that Matt was talking about earlier with, with VMs and using Elastic Groups. Yeah, you don't, it's Kubernetes. You, you don't usually care about the workers. So, you know, having the workers be replaced. Uh, as long as the applications are correctly defined where they have uh, uh, anti-infinity, multiple pods and anti-infinity, you, you're good. It, it shouldn't, shouldn't notice anything. Uh, most of our, by default, our worker nodes are 100% spot instances. We do have additional virtual node groups that have on-demand to handle the, those database workloads that can't really handle those interruptions that well. Let's see, and in our case, there's a few different ways to, to create and deploy Ocean. In our case, we used a modified version of EKS CTL, which is modified by the, the Spot team, Spot by NetApp team. Uh, and once we kind of started with that, we kind of stuck with it because you know, that way we're not managing clusters in a different way. They're all, all the clusters are, are managed the same way, but you, you can import clusters, you can deploy with Terraform, Ansible, and you know, mul multiple ways to go through and create your clusters. Now, you, when you do that, you really need to think about your end state, how you plan on managing the clusters. Yeah, so if you're gonna manage them with Terraform, you, you might wanna start out creating the clusters with Terraform, 
just so you can have that ability to manage a little bit easier with the, the state uh, after they're, they're created. And that was, uh, that's, uh, that's ocean in, in a nutshell. Once you get it set up, it's, it's easy to use. It's very low maintenance. Uh, we typically only interact much with, with ocean when we're trying to either change the headroom or do patching. We do, we do monthly patching. So we, we, we build custom AMIs and update the AMI, roll the clusters. Outside of that, I mean, ocean just, it, it runs. It, we, spend very little time managing the cluster versus what we've, we've had in the past with either on-prem clusters or other technologies. Very good. Thank you, Scott. Um, if you have a question, now is the time to ask. So feel free to use the chat. So Marco had a question. Yeah. Uh, in the, the q and I'll, I'll read it real real fast. On the customer side, if we have servers on-prem and the costs are already sunk, I, I think that's what that means. Going to the cloud does not see the savings. It's different for a customer who has nothing and has to start from nothing. Yeah, I mean, that's true. But um, like NetApp IT, and I think a lot of customers have a hardware refresh cycle, right, for everything. So for servers and network gear and storage um, on a three-year cadence, right? So Ops was always in this mode of, of doing these huge refresh projects, right? Lots of money, lots of work to refresh. Um, you know, by going to the public cloud, yeah, you, you may be getting away from some sunk costs, but you know, it's a one-time transition. So, you know, if you can time it right towards the the end of your your refresh window, um, you know, it can still be beneficial even in the short term uh, to go from on-prem to public cloud. Yeah, in, in our case with Kubernetes, we, we have both on-prem and and in AWS different different clusters. So I mean, we we pretty much expanded into AWS uh, from from on-prem. So I mean, there are opportunities to to work it into the into your flows or, or in, into your system outside of those uh, typical three-year cadences. Very good. All right, well, I'm going to count down. If there's no further questions, we will call it a day. And five, four, three, two, and one. All right, well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back again next month. Um, I'll be sending out a copy of the deck as well as the presentation later today so be on the lookout for that and other than that scott and matt thank you so much for your help sure thank you all right see everyone